Hello church family, Pastor Mario Navarro Jr. here, and this is another presentation in our discipleship training class for evangelism. If you haven't already viewed or listened to our previous presentations, go to our YouTube channel EWESDA Church and take a look at five keys to successful evangelism as well as soul winning the wise choice. And please remember to subscribe to our channel so that you will get updates on future presentations just like this one and updates to new sermons and testimonies that we'll be uploading to our channel. We also appreciate your feedback, so please comment and like this video. Well, today's presentation is called The Power of the Holy Spirit and Intercessory Prayer. We're going to do our best to try to squeeze these two presentations in, but if it takes a little bit longer, we'll have two presentations instead of one. So let's ask the Lord right now to lead us as we study. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you again for choosing and using us. And Lord, we want to be effective soul winners. We want to be disciples for your kingdom. So Lord, as we talk about now the power of the Holy Spirit and intercessory prayer, please, we ask the Holy Spirit to be with us, to lead us and to guide us. We ask for the power of the Spirit, and we ask, Lord, how to pray. So, Father, be with us. We thank you for hearing and answering this prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, I want to start off with a story, and this story is told of a woman who spent months saving to purchase a new refrigerator. Now, she was extremely disappointed when she discovered that the refrigerator didn't work. The milk spoiled, the fruit rotted, and the vegetables wilted. Although this was the first refrigerator that she had ever owned, she knew that something was desperately wrong. How could she invest so much in a product that was so seriously flawed? The poor lady called the company she purchased the refrigerator from, and she filed a complaint. Well, they sent an appliance repairman to her home, and he was amazed when he discovered that the refrigerator was not plugged in properly. The plug was loose. There was simply no power. The most important thing that that refrigerator needed was power. It needed to be connected to the source of power. Well, friends, there are many Christians today with a loose connection. If they are going to be effective soul winners, they need to be connected to the source of all power. It is power that they need. They need the Holy Spirit power. Now, Sister White reveals that a revival of the Holy Spirit power is in fact our greatest need. Here's a selection from First Selected Messages, page 121. She says this, that a revival of true godliness among us is the greatest and most urgent of all our needs. To seek this should be our first work. There must be earnest effort to obtain the blessing of the Lord, not because God is not willing to bestow His blessing upon us, but because we are unprepared to receive it. She goes on to say, Our Heavenly Father is more willing to give His Holy Spirit to them that ask Him than our earthly parents to give good gifts to their children. But it is our work by confession, humiliation, repentance, and earnest prayer to fulfill the conditions upon which God has promised to grant us His blessing. You see, friends, it's impossible to be a successful witness for God without the power of the Holy Spirit flowing into our lives. And in this presentation, we're going to discover how to receive the power of the Holy Spirit so that we can become effective soul winners. And we shall also learn the art of life-changing intercessory prayer. So let's take a look first off at receiving the Holy Spirit. Now, the Bible outlines some practical steps that we can take to prepare our hearts to receive the Holy Spirit. And we might call them the ABCs for receiving the Holy Spirit. Now, here's question number one. What is the first condition for receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit? Well, the book of Luke chapter 11 verse 13 says this, If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father 
Give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him. You see, God invites us to ask for the Spirit. And the reason we are to ask is not because God is reluctant to give His Spirit, but because we are unprepared to receive it. Our asking prepares our hearts to receive. And asking is the first step in the process of reception. Now here's question number two. After we ask God for the Holy Spirit, what is the next essential step? Mark chapter 11, verse 24. The Bible says here, Therefore I say unto you, What things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and ye shall have them. Now friends, belief is faith that God will deliver on His promises when we meet the conditions. Belief, friends, is trust in God to do just what He says He will do. The first two conditions for receiving the Holy Spirit are asking God for His gift and believing that He will fulfill His word. Here's another quotation from the book Early Writings, page 115. It says, Ask, believe, and receive. There is too much mocking the Lord, too much praying that is not praying, and that wearies angels and displeases God, too many vain, unmeaning petitions. First, we should feel needy, and then ask God for the very things we need, believing that He gives them to us even while we ask, and then our faith will grow, all will be edified. The weak will be strengthened and the discouraged and desponding made to look up and believe that God is a rewarder of all those who diligently seek Him. Question number three. What is the third step in receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit? Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. The Bible says, Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. When the times of refreshing shall come, from the presence of the Lord. Now friends, repentance is one aspect of confession. In true confession, we lay our hearts bare before God. We acknowledge our sins and express heartfelt sorrow for them. Repentance has to do with a change of mind or heart. This soul sorrow, this sadness because we have broken God's heart, what it does is it opens our own hearts to be effective witnesses. Before the day of Pentecost, the upper room was a place of genuine confession and repentance. Before Pentecost, the disciples asked for the Spirit. They believed God's promise and claimed it by faith and opened their hearts to receive the Spirit through genuine confession and repentance. Reflecting Christ, page 102 says this, that there's a great need of the Holy Spirit's influence in our midst. There must be an individual work done in the breaking of stubborn hearts. There needs to be deep heart searching that will lead to confession of sin. Believers should at this time stand with softened, sanctified, broken hearts, every sin confessed in repentance that needeth not to be repented of. Question number four, what will be the results of taking these first steps? Acts chapter one and verse eight. The Bible says here, but ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Now, just as the Holy Spirit was poured out, on the praying, believing, confessing disciples, it will be poured out in our day. Once again, the power of God will flow from His throne. God will raise up a last generation of witnesses, and when the conditions are met, the promise will be fulfilled. The more we know Christ, the more we long to share His love with others. The more we share His love, the more we long to know Him better. The more we love Him, the more we will witness. The more we witness, the more we love Him. Witnessing to others is linked to our spiritual growth. The book Desire of Ages, page 142, says this, that God could have reached His object in saving sinners without our aid. 
But in order for us to develop a character like Christ, we must share in His work. And in order to enter into His joy, the joy of seeing souls redeemed by His sacrifice, we must participate in His labors for their redemption. You see, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit is promised to those who are seeking God for power to witness. You see, Testimonies, Volume 6, page 90 says this, The Holy Spirit will come only to all who are begging for the bread of life to give to their neighbors. Friends, is this what we're doing? Are we begging the Lord, the Holy Spirit, to give us this bread of life so that we can share it with our neighbors? I hope this is our desire. I hope this is our prayer.